Oxygen Blast Technical Seminars are an Intertech production. For instructor-led.net, Java, and XML courses, visit us at www.intertech.com. So maybe the best way to start to take a look at uh, uh, RESTful Web Services and get an appreciation for these idea of uh, RESTful resource nouns and actions, the verbs that we can take on those resources, is to see some things by example here. So I've placed in our document, in our presentation today, some URLs that uh, I'm going to go out and take a look at with you here on a browser, but you can certainly then use these sites to explore RESTful Web Services yourself. In fact, RESTful Web Services are, are provided by all sorts of organizations out there today, gang, as I mentioned. People like, or I should say organizations like eBay and Yahoo already provide RESTful web services for conducting business with those organizations. You'll also find them in places like Salesforce.com and Google and Amazon and a whole host of lists of organizations, both commercial businesses as well as information providers that offer all sorts of machine-to-machine -machine facilitation through the RESTful API. But I've provided a couple here that require no activation of keys, no license arrangements, anything of that nature. So these are, if you will, free uh, and open RESTful web services that you can kind of play around with as a client, just using a browser to start to appreciate RESTful web services and how they operate. Uh, one is a CDIN uh, company has a RESTful web service out there that provide uh, stock quotes. We'll take a look at that. And another is an organization, a geoname organization, that allows you to go fetch all sorts of information uh, about the um, countries, their population, elevation, things of that nature. We'll take a look at a couple of simple examples here where we just explore some information about uh, countries like uh, the United States and uh, France and Great Britain, things of that nature. So let me uh, take one second here to bring up a browser game. Okay. So what I've, uh, what I've brought up on the screen, and let me... Uh, that just a little bit wider so we can take advantage of the URL or see the URL, I should say. So what I've done here, gang, is to bring up uh, a little IE Explorer, and hopefully you can see in, uh, in my browser I've entered in a URL here. Uh, this is a URL, a URL to a resource offered by C9, again, on stock quotes. So all the information up to uh, this point Essentially, is that information just to get us out to their uh, particular domain. But if we take a look, then, we'll see request information here. In this case, to get the stock price for 3M. What do we get back? Well, if you take a look at our example, what we're getting back in this case is none other than XML. Now, for those of you who are uh, SOAP aware and have done web services uh, via SOAP, you'll notice that even though this is XML, it's not a SOAP-based message. It's the raw XML information that might be contained, for example, in the body of a SOAP message, but it doesn't contain the SOAP uh, envelope, the header, all that kind of information that usually tends to bloat our SOAP messages sub substantially. So, yeah, XML can still be used as a means of communicating data, communicating resource state in the RESTful web service world, uh, just as it is in the SOAP world, but maybe in a little lighter fashion. Let's take a look at another example. Here we have a, a web service a RESTful call for the same stock uh, quote service, but in this case going out and asking for the Google stock price. So we get the same information again in XML, uh, but now all we had to do was change in that URL, change our stock symbol request in this case to go out and get uh, stock price for Google. So you'll start to notice that the URLs here, again, serve as a means to communicate a request on the part of a client. In this case, it's just my browser, but it could just as easily be some sort of application out there. Using a URL in a browser, go out and get a resource, get the state of a resource, in this case, the stock price for Google. Let's take a look at a couple of other examples. This goes to the GeoName um, site that I mentioned before. Here's a request out to the GeoNames org site for country information. And in particular, we're specifying in our URL that the country that we're requesting information on is the U.S. So we get back all sorts of information about the, uh, where we are located, what our population is, things of that nature. Not sure if you ever knew what the uh, latitude and longitude uh, coordinates were for the box that contains the U.S., but if you ever need to know, there you go. Again, in XML format. But we could just as easily go out and ask for that same information, or in this case, information about Great Britain, 
not in XML format, but in this case in none other than simple comma separated value format. Now, again, it's being shown through my browser, and so certain, uh, I think the commas are being stripped out of that, but using a uh, application technology, we could use that same URL to get information on Great Britain or any country from this website um, in all sorts of formats, in XML, in JSON, in comma-separated value. Again, depending on the service provider, all sorts of formats are at the disposal of the requester, and in fact, even the requester in the URL gets to specify what format they're interested in. So quite a bit lighter, at least in terms of a client's perspective and view of how web services work, still facilitating machine-to-machine -machine communication, but quite a bit lighter than what we typically see in a SOAP-based world. Okay, so again, those are some uh, quick and uh, down-and-dirty examples about, uh, at least from a client's perspective, about what RESTful web services are all about. We're talking about resources, and resources can be just about anything that we uh, have in our environment. We typically think about those as our domain concepts. We request those with uh, URLs that uniquely identify the resource and also, often also typically specify the format of the information we're interested in. And again, that format is at the client's or requester's uh, designation, typically, as part of that URL. And again, the actions that we take, whether or not we want the resource, we want to update the resource, or maybe delete the resource, all are specified, at least when we're using the World Wide Web HTTP protocol, uh, that's specified through the HTTP methods. Okay, so with an understanding of RESTful Web Services, let's talk about RESTful Web Services in the Java community. We have this paradigm now that uh, we can use to help facilitate machine and machine communications in a little bit lighter fashion than what is offered via SOAP. How can we get this to work in our Java world? Well, in fact, when you look at this paradigm and how it operates, since it typically operates over the World Wide Web, it would be actually quite easy for us to go out there and set up something like a simple servlet to be able to correspond with clients and have them call into our servlet and provide all sorts of uh, data in all sorts of formats using that paradigm of the uh, World Wide Web and the, uh, the action methods of HTTP, since servlets respond to all those actions, to respond back and essentially roll your own Java RESTful web services through servlets. And while that was initially done by a lot of folks, uh, that could be a little bit tedious. You're going to have to now manage every piece of that communication and every detail of how that uh, uh, data is uh, sent back. Even formatting that data might be a bit of a burden for you. So as we started to see RESTful Web Services evolve in the Java community, we saw a number of open source projects uh, come into fruition that started to take a look and say, well, let us at least provide some tooling, some API to help you with that. And in particular, one of the more popular was uh, RESTlet open source project that allowed us to use servlets, but gave you some facilitation there so you didn't have to do all of your own work in providing mechanisms to route traffic and take care of the uh, responses all on your own. Essentially, you provided some uh, some capability about telling this environment, this RESTlet environment, about how you want to respond to requests, but a lot of the work was done then internal in terms of taking care of the response and marshalling all the data back and forth to clients and servers. We also saw the community that makes up the SOAP web service community in Java, the JAXWS community, also take a look at the rest of web services and said, hey, we think we can provide some assistance here as well. So while JAXWS was originally designed and used to process SOAP messages, it was retrofitted by the SOAP community and others to help allow or facilitate, if you will, RESTful web services to be handled by these same objects. So it's a little bit clumsy and a little bit of an inconvenient solution if you take a look at it in detail to use JAX uh, WS to help build RESTful web services out of this, what is SOAP API. Uh, but it does allow you to build what are simple POJOs and then through some configuration, allow those plain old Java objects to respond to and address RESTful web service needs. While that was kind of a stopgap measure to providing RESTful web services in the Java world, the real API king here in the Java community now is something called JAX RS. 
And this is a relatively recent addition to the Java community. In fact, it uh, just came out in October of 2008 and uh, has been recently made part of the Java Enterprise 6 environment, something we'll talk about here in just a bit. So the JAX uh, RS implementation, what does it do? Well, that's what's going to be the concentration of our talk here going forward. And we'll take a look at the details, at least some of the details, about how to get this API up and running. But the idea here is that it does the work of mapping those URIs and HTTP methods and the request for certain MIME content uh, or format, if you will, negotiates all that for us and gets things routed into, again, plain old Java objects that handle those requests in our web service, RESTful web service world. POJO seemed to be the attractive point of just about any um, Java technology here as of late, things like Spring and Hibernate, again, all operate via these plain old Java objects with things like annotations to help facilitate from database persistence all the way up to, in this case, handling RESTful web service requests. And so uh, we'll see that being adopted in, in large part in just about any technology today in the Java community. For more free learning resources and to see the latest lineup of our instructor-led .NET, Java, and XML courses, visit us at www.intertech.com. <laughs>